In this video, we'll be taking up the homework sheet for trigonometric word problems. So the first question is just a straightforward Ferris wheel question. And in fact, they even gave us the equation. So solve for the moments where the rider is 20 meters above the ground. Um, I solve for the infinite moments where the rider is 20 meters above the ground. But like I said, uh, they're looking for the first two times the rider is 20 meters above the ground. So that's basically looking at the first cycle. So we're looking at about 10.24 seconds and about 6.38 seconds. It's interesting to note that the solutions you solve for are 40.24 and 46.38 seconds. You can't accept these. So it's a very common mistake that we accept them. Uh, so what you have to do is travel 30 seconds back in time. Now, why do we get this 40.24 and why do we get the 46.3? Uh, what you can do is solve for the horizontal translation. And you'll notice that the translation is greater than the period. That's why you solve for solutions that are not within uh, the first cycle. Uh, for B, uh, just graph it, not much to say. but. Uh, it's interesting that the rider doesn't start at the bottom of the wheel. That's why the graph looks a little skewed, uh, but it is what it is. Uh, the, gra the rider doesn't start at the bottom, uh, so you have to make note of that. Uh, for number two, you're basically shooting a cannonball. The speed is 15 meters per second. Gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, and the range is 15 meters. Sub them all in. Solve for theta. There's a restriction on theta. And... It makes sense because you can't shoot the cannonball straight up and you can't shoot it along the ground. So it makes sense if you've ever thrown something like a basketball or a ball, um, you'll realize that you the angles that you can choose are anywhere between 0 and 90 degrees. Um, I also want to mention that I solved for the infinite solutions and then based on the restriction, I rejected everything except these two angles. Question three is basically a trigonometric inequality. So you set uh, V to be 120 and you solve for T. Now, a very common mistake is that students just take 0 .0, 0 0.0062 and subtract it by 0 0.0021. Now that will give you the answer, that will give you the time where the voltage is greater than 120 volts, but um, you should really draw the graph and show that you can take the difference of these values of t. Be because um, if this graph was different, for example, if this is a cosine graph, and you solve for the moments of 120, and you subtracted them, you will actually solve for the time where it's below 120 volts. Okay, so I for this for trigonometric inequality, I highly recommend you to give yourself a graph. Uh, don't just take the difference of the solutions because um, that will be a problem. Okay, so be very careful. Uh, just like any inequality we solved earlier in the course, a graph was really helpful. So definitely recommend you solve you solve for the, the, the values of t or whatever the uh, solutions are to your equation and then check them with a graph uh, so yeah it's not safe it's uh, too long uh, question four we're looking at a boat that's tied uh, basically you solve for the model so amplitude is 0.9 and the k value is pi over 2 uh, and then they say, when is the height 0.5 meters? So I solve for the infinite solutions. Now they say the third cycle. So the third cycle means between 8 seconds and 12 seconds. Because the first cycle takes place from 0 to 4. The second cycle is 4 to 8. And then the third cycle is 8 to 12. So the solutions must be from 8 to 12 seconds. So I've got 8.37 and 9.63. All right, two more. Question five is uh, a water wheel question. Basically, you generate the model. They want a sine and a cosine. So I gave them sine and cosine. Uh, if they didn't force me to do both, I would have just done sine because why introduce a horizontal translation or horizontal shift when I don't need to? Um, 
find the height after 20 seconds, just use the model. I chose the sine model. Uh, for C, one is the height 1.6 meters. Uh, basically solve for the infinite solutions. Set the restriction because we're looking at the first 15 seconds here. Uh, oh, because it's during the first turn. Mm, and you get two solutions. Okay, this is very similar. I don't know if it's exactly the same question as the handout. No, it's super similar. Instead of a, th it's a three here, uh, but in the handout and the lesson, I believe was a four. So the strategy for this question is exactly the same as the handout. Uh, be careful, divide both sides by cos 6t. So state the restrictions because you, you have to make sure these solutions um, are not so these restrictions are not matching up with the solutions and they don't so we're good to go um, we are allowed to divide both sides by cosine 60 uh, first three seconds and then these are your solutions so and I believe in my solutions I always my strategy was always to find the infinite solutions and then based on the restriction on time for example then I reject most of them and retain them so I, I I'm very worried when students just solve for 0 0.208 and then without this k pi over 6 they somehow find the other solutions um, even if the answer the answers are correct I get very nervous uh, because I just don't know how you came about the six answers. So actually, what most students, or not most, but some students, they take a, they take the inverse of three, inverse tan of three, and they find the quadrant one answer and quadrant three answer, and then they, they keep adding by pi over six because they realize that the period is pi over six. Uh, that's not wrong, but this is much more elegant. You gather all the solutions, Based on the restrictions, you write down what you can accept. It's as opposed to solve for the solutions and hopefully you've, you've found everything that falls within the restriction. Okay, so that's the last homework sheet uh, before we do the review for this chapter.